Hey everybody, this is uh, the Poor Boy Chicago again. Uh, I'm gonna do some side by sides on a couple weapons here. I got my Sig Sauer uh, SP 2022, and over here I got my the Sava EZ9. Um, they're both great guns. Um, they're both very similar to each other. They're both modeled after the SIG uh, P226 and P29s. Um, this one has a pommular frame. This one has the aluminum frame. Um, they're both great shooting guns. I I really enjoy shooting both of them actually. Um, I'll give you the goods and the bads on both of them. Uh, by the way, yes, they both are empty. You know, as you can tell. You know, that thing in the barrel there it is perfectly empty. Now this one's a little bit more hard to rack and also a lock. Um, but as you can tell, it is empty. Nothing in there. Um, here are the mags. This is the Festava mag. It's a 15 round magazine. And this is the SIG mag. It's also a 15 round mag. Um, they're both double action, single end double action fire, hammer fire on both of them. Um, they're both almost identical on the shooting. Um, very smooth, very heavy guns, um, but they're very smooth on shooting because of the weight, I, I would suppose, and they both got the same exact barrel, a uh, 3.9 and 3.8, something like that. Um, the both guns are, they both have the same style mechanisms on it except for the Zestava is more of a left or right handed shooting gun. Um, you have your mag release on either side. You, know, you can press it from here or from here. Um, the slide release is ambidextrous as well, right here and right here. So you got it. You know, you can go either way. You know, on your left side or your right side. This sucker's being stubborn today. Never, never like that. There we go. Maybe I'm just being weak today, but it's on both sides. Both sides is the uh, hammer decocker. You know, on the SIG, it's only on one. You know, I gotta take the mag out of this so it'll balance up on the table, right? Okay, on the SIG, more easier to rack a slide. Yeah, very weak, like I said in previous videos, quite a bit of them. Um, it, everything's all on the right side, or left side of the gun, you know, for right-handed shooters. Um, I've heard that you can do the uh, mag release, switch it over so your left-handers can shoot it, or use the mag release. 
Um, hate doing that. Um, it does have the decocker, but it's only on the left side of the gun. Um, they both have the picketry rails, so you can put lights on them. Um, the difference is under the stab, I think I mentioned it before, it's rounded. So you gotta make sure you have the right fitting you know, on any type of light. You can use an old light. I have had it on here before, but I just can't find the, the fitting. I got it somewhere amongst my mess, my pile. Um, but if you look at them pretty much side by side, you'll see they're very similar. Yeah. A, you look at the designs and everything, it's all pretty much very, very similar. Um, the SIG has all the makings of the 226 and the 229. Yep just the palm and I'm screwing up on that palm of frame I think um, and you can also change out the grips um, on the Zestava it is an aluminum frame and it's a very wide it's actually a little bit more wider then this one, if you compare the grips, you can see that the Stava is just a hair bit more wider than the SIG on the grip. So when you're reaching around for the mag release on the Stava, it, it's sometimes I have to just pop it out with my pointer finger. You know, that way when I'm holding it, I need to switch out, boom, drop a new one in, I'm ready to go. As to the SIG, it's right there, boom. I don't have to change my grip or anything. I just grab a hold of it, you know, push the button, and you're good to go. Um, they both have combat style sights, you know, flat face sights. Uh, you know, they're both white dot, you know, all three. Um, same thing with the SIG. They're the same style sights. The difference between the two is the takedown. The takedown on a SIG I think is a little bit more harder than the Stava, but lately the Stava has been kind of giving me some problems. Um, I gotta go through it and oil it down and grease it and everything. Not grease it, but oil it down and clean it. You know, just the basic simple things. Um, they both have a <coughs> 10 pound pull on the single action, as you can tell it's clear, but on the single action, you know, that's a 10 pound pull. You know, right here, it got to about maybe a five or six pound pull. Um, actually, that was a double action, sorry. No single action. Ah, my old age. <laughs> Getting kind of hard. Figure things out. But anyways, the double action pull is 10 pounds, about that, give or take, on this one. And the single action is about 4 pounds, 5 pounds, max. Um, 
the Stava really doesn't have a reset. You know, you shoot it. You know, there really is no reset. It's right there. Let's see, my end of my finger's right there. So, and even if I hit that reset and I come back to the wall, I got a little travel. Then it fires. On the SIG, you know, you got a decent reset. Right there, very audible. You can feel it very well. You know, you got that four pound pull. Um, the goods and the bads on these. The, this particular Zestava is the ported barrel. So after you go through a box or two of rounds, your front dot gets blackened out. Yeah, you know, that's the one bad thing about it. Plus, you know, they say there's no real big reset. You know, you hit the end, you come back. You know, but that end, as you can see, I'm already there at the very, you know, so I try to do that again. Okay. So now there's your click. I ended up right there, but see, I'm already there. So really there is no <coughs> reset. See? Yeah. So you just got once you feel and hear that click, which is very nice because you can hear it and you can feel it. You can feel it really well. Um, you just have that small little take up. Yeah, it's a very good crisp trigger. I mean, I wish it did a reset, kind of like the, the SIG does, but it is what it is. You know, it's a Serbian gun. Um, by the way, I needed to correct myself. I said that it was from the from the uh, Czech, but it's actually from uh, Serbia when they took over Yugoslavia. It's a Yugoslavian gun, <laughs> but it still is used by the Serbian police and military. Um, they still have it in use. But I've had a few friends want this particular gun. And we can't find it anywhere. I mean, we've looked up classic firearms and everybody. And they'll show you know, that they may have the gun. And then when you go on their deal to look for it, they're, they're sold out. Um, so... So far that I know of, I'm the only one I got to them. I'm sure there's probably a few thousand of them out there. Um, I've seen maybe a half dozen or maybe up to a dozen videos of this particular gun. Uh, not very many. But anyways, uh, both guns are actually same exact size. The the Stava is just a hair bit wider. Yeah. You know, um, as a length wise. They both are identical. Um, size wise or length wise. Yeah. You know, the only difference on them, on that part, 
is back here there's a stylus sticks out more and you, know, you, you get a pretty pretty good grip on it when you're shooting but I say my problem is is trying to catch that mag release so I just can't quite get it and my thumb I have to really stretch so I have to change my shooting position you know my my hand position to be able to get in there you know so if I want to shoot and I want to hit that mag I can get it but it takes a little finagling you know so that's why either when I'm firing and I'm practicing you know on mag release I'll just use my thumb here you know when I'm shooting like this I'll bring it down hit the mag release let it drop grab the other because this hand is already going to go grab another mag so why not just as I'm coming down to sweep the mag you know and grab it now as of the SIG I'm going to say and I even have the big the bigger uh, grip on here I can put it on you know and I can still hit it very easily you know and I say they're just this one's just a little bit wider um, as a shooting wise they're both identical when you shoot either one of them very smooth I love the way they shoot um, there's a stop I've probably shot more well I know I have because the SIG is only a couple months old for me I've had it for a little while but I don't remember when I bought it the stop I've had it for a couple of years now and quite a bit of people have shot it and quite a people really really like it um, but I haven't had anybody shoot this one yet um, I, I bought it and I kind of put it away for a little while and uh, so was a couple months ago a friend of mine was like let's go to the range and I had shot it before but I just kind of put it away and I was trying out all my others you know giving everything else a, a shot you know giving everything else a try maybe my GX4 and my Canik you know because those are the ones I wanted to carry because this one's a little bit difficult to carry you know it, it prints quite a bit along with this one it prints quite a bit as well so both of them are kind of hard to carry they're, they're great outside the waistband you know um, open carry they're great for that um, good for inside the waistband and you know tucking it up up by your boys down there you know which I can't carry that way you know I mean I'm not a big guy or anything like that but it's just uncomfortable for me um, but they're both great guns I, I love both of them you know <clears throat> I wouldn't give either one of them up at all you know they're they're both kind of my favorites you know, even though there's a mostly carry my Canik around because it's a smaller lighter gun and it carries it up to 15 rounds I got 15 round magazines for it too you know <clears throat> and I also got two 12 rounds for it it's more designed for carry as well um, they both have uh, loaded chamber indicators under the Staba you'll see right there the little pin that sticks up so when you got around in the chamber you can actually feel it 
and you can also see it sticking up just a little bit, not much. It, if you're not looking for it, you're not gonna you're not gonna see it, but you know because it's also chrome and the the slide is chrome. Um, the SIG has that small one right there, which you can feel it and see it when you got it around in the chamber. Um, let's say I, I don't have really like bad bad things to say about them about either one of them other than you know I, I have the problems reaching the, the mag release with the, the, the Stava but it's my favorite shooting gun out of all really probably a little bit more than the SIG you know the thing I like about the SIG is it does have you know the uh, the reset, you know. So that's one thing I do like about that. You know, got a short reset. Stop was a little bit long. You know, it's actually a lot long and coming back to it. But there was one video I shot with this thing, and you guys on this one. And I wanted to try it with double action, and you guys probably saw me flinch, you know, because I was in that double action mode, and I went to go pull, and I realized that big long travel before it snaps. The Stava really doesn't have that problem because you're already into it, and about, let's see, right there compared to all the way back you know on the double action on the SIG so the Stiver releases a lot sooner on the double action but on the single action you know you got that little bit of a pull on the SIG you got a little bit more of a pull on the double action but then you got the reset so they both balance out the same, you know. And that's about it, really. Um, <coughs> that I could come up with. Yeah, if you guys uh, can, let me know what it, what other information you guys want, you know. Uh, and I'll try to pull it up. Um, but if you could try either one of these, I guarantee you guys, you guys would really, really like them. You know, and they're both actually very affordable. The style I paid about the same amount that I paid for the SIG. You know, and that was a couple of years ago. You know, the SIG has been a few months. You know, I'm thinking about going down the next week or two and picking up another SIG. I was looking at one today and might pick it up. Who knows? We'll see what I actually come up with on that idea. You know, I'm starting a new job. I think I mentioned that I was coming off from over the road truck driving. Uh, finally, my wife is back at home. She's asleep right now. Um, she has a Parkinson's and, you know, she really can't be in the truck and I wanted her home, you know, I'm tired of being at home by myself all the time. You know, I missed having her around. You know, but anyways, give these guys a try if you ever get that, that, that chance. They said, you enjoy shooting them. I mean, very, very smooth guns. Um, closest I think that would come to the Zestava is the 229 or the 226 um, on weight wise and probably even on shooting as well. I've never shot one. I've, I've always wanted 
one of them too for many, 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 many years. That's why I bought this. Yeah, because this was their basic model, except for the polymer frame. Yeah, yeah, finally got it right. Um, you know, they they had the aluminum frames on those. You know, but like I said they're both very nice guns. I I really enjoy them. I enjoy shooting them. You know, this is the Saba Easy Nine. Yeah. And this is a six SIG twenty or SP twenty twenty two. You know, very both of them are very affordable. You can find a Zostava, you could probably pick one up for about five, six hundred bucks. Yeah. Um same thing with the twenty twenty six. I, I think they went up in price to about five six hundred bucks. Um, I think I bought this one for five fifty. Um, but give them a try. All right, you all take it easy. Be safe out there. Like and subscribe if you want. You know, share. Um, and be safe out there. Things things are getting crazy out there. The ATF is coming after all of us. That want to have these around for our own self-protection also for just having them around going down to the range and you know uh, punching holes in some paper you know and just kind of hanging out you know with other shooters you know other fellow shooters I mean I enjoy it I enjoy being around all you people when I'm at the range you know so, yeah, just pick yourself up one, you know, if you could give one a try, go for it. If you see me at the range, you know, I'm out here in Omaha, Nebraska. You see me out in the range, you know, one day, and you want to try either one of these or whatever I got, I just so happened to bring with me that day. You know, um, I'm going to probably take a trip down to... Springfield and pull out a couple of my little armory out there. You know, uh, a couple of ones I, I really actually enjoy shooting. My little mouse gun. I haven't shot that thing in so long. You know, I figured I'd bring it up here, clean it up, and shoot it off a little bit and clean it up again and take it back down there and put it in my little armory down there. Yeah, I got a little armory set up around the U.S. Well, not all over the place, but a couple of states, you know, just in case, you know, I'm in those areas. You know, because even without being a truck driver, I can still travel. I got cars. You know, I can still get out and do things. And, you know, I'm Probably pull out a couple of my little minis, you know, and pop off a few and have some fun with them. Maybe I'll make some videos of them. You know, you might like them, you know. All right, well, you all take it easy. Be safe out there, you know. Make sure to carry yourself one of these bad boys, you know, anything, you know, other than a rock. You know, protect yourself, protect your family, protect your neighbors, you know, your community, you know, if you have to, you know, but most of all, just be safe, you know, remember, don't get caught slipping out there, all right, y'all have a good day, bye-bye.